Hello everybody, my name is Bear, welcome back to the Indie Spotlight, and this week we shine the spotlight upon Gunman Clive. It is a, uh, a project of love made by two brothers, I believe, whose names I'm about to butcher. It's, uh, I think it's Bertil Orberg and Arn Orberg. And, uh, it's, uh, you know, two people, which is awesome. I love, I love games made by super small teams like this. It's on Steam for two dollars. Two dollars! This isn't even a sale price, this is two bucks regularly. It might go on sale for like 50 cents at some point, which is amazing. So, I mean, I don't even really have to describe it that much just to tell you that this is absolutely worth two bucks. You should totally check it out. Uh, you can find the link to it, link and information in the, uh, in the description down below if you're watching this on YouTube. Also the command exclamation point spotlight if any mod wants to pop that up, up on the uh, Twitch chat right now. You can find more information about it on their Steam page. It was, this was actually a title that was Steam Greenlit a little while ago. It just came out on Steam on January 4th. It's also been available on quite a few other platforms as well. I believe it was on the eShop for a little while. I'm not 100% sure about that. Uh, but this is the graphics menu. Not, not too much to deal with here. The only really advanced graphics option is Super Sample, which is interesting that that would be the only one available, but... You know, uh, 2x, 4x, and off, and doesn't really make too much of a difference. I'm, of course, playing this in a window, 20, 1280 by 720 resolution, just so we can make things as smooth as possibly can be. Alright, so, uh, I'm playing this on an Xbox 360 controller. I've tried it initially on the keyboard, but I'm always just so, uh, so preferential to controllers when we're dealing with a platformer. But anyway, let's go ahead and jump in to Gunman Clive. As you can see, I've been playing a little bit. I'm on stage 13, which is just over halfway through the game, about 24 minutes in. People have been saying it takes about an hour to an hour and a half to play through the entirety of the game. And I think there's like four big stages with four levels each or something like that, and then four bosses. You know, like kind of similar to Spelunky, which is odd, odd enough, although Spelunky doesn't have bosses, clearly, except for the final two. But, in order to avoid spoilers, too much. I'm gonna go ahead and start off on a new file here. You can play as either Clive or Miss Johnson, Johnson, which is kind of cool. I'm kind of tempted to start off as Miss Johnson because I imagine that means that when you start off the scene, you'll see what I'm talking about in a moment here. But it might mean Clive is abducted instead of Miss Johnson, which is kind of rad. And of course, just kind of standard difficulty. I'm gonna go with the normal just for the part of the course here. So let's do it. So yeah, there's what I'm talking about. Maybe Clive starts on that uh, on that abducting horse cart, horse and carriage when you start off the game, which is kind of cool. So, the first thing you guys are probably noticing is the uh, the very unique art style. And uh, something that I really liked when I was looking onto the, into this for my own research was uh, the trailer for this game. It's kind of self-aware of the fact that a lot of indies are trying to go for this originality aspect. Uh, they're not really trying to claim that they're making the best game in the world, but they're trying to let you know that, hey, like at least it's a cool little unique uh, twist to things. But it's very self-aware to the point where it goes like, interesting quirky art style and like this header on the screen as it's showing it to you is like I like that I like when they can poke fun at themselves for little things like that but I really like this uh, I know there's been a few people I know I've, I've actually uh, heard from a few of my buddies that, that weren't uh, big fans of this what I like in particular is the uh, the fact that it kind of fades between 2 and 3d I'm, I'm, I'm continually like respawning this guy just because I want some more cake honestly Cake replenishes your health. Uh, pretty basic stuff. But I like how the uh, the buildings kind of fade in and out of two and three dimensions, or at least give the appearance of doing so, which is pretty neat in my opinion. Uh, oh, and Katifrit gave me this game. Yeah, I should totally mention that. Uh, he, he gave me a gift copy of this, and I uh, reached out to the developer too. But yeah, thank you, Katifrit, for that. Um, but yeah, this is a very unique art style for sure. Absolutely. Uh, I haven't really seen much like it before. The the one issue I have with it is the fact that uh, whatever whatever like interesting little effect is going on on the screen is like this sepia tone being granulized into uh, into an active world in the background. I suppose kind of adjusts the frame rate, um, you know, undesirably a little bit. And I think that has entirely entirely everything to do with the fact that uh, it it works so hard in. Uh, making things appear so lively on the screen there, so that's kind of a bummer, but you know not not too big of a detraction It only brings it down from a 60 to about like a 45 FPS, which is probably good for most people uh, How are the controls they seem floaty there are they are a little floaty as you can see I was having a little bit of trouble with that jump takes some getting used to for sure, but um Overall, it's not too terrible. It's you it's usually pretty precise responds pretty well to your inputs uh, what you can see right now is something I failed to mention too, uh, the fact that you can get uh, upgrades to your weapon. Right now I've ha I have a spread shot gun going on, uh, allows me to hit t 
targets multiple times, that probably would have done some damage to me if I didn't have this, actually, so it would be pretty... pretty terrible if that weren't the case. We did just clear this stage in a terrible time. These stages usually take, uh... You know, like, uh... One to two minutes, if you're pretty familiar with what's happening in the game. Uh, let me go ahead and try to hit this guy from down here. I imagine we could probably do it if I get the shot just right. Oh, it's so close with the spread shot. There we go, alright, hit him right in the face, nice. Um, one thing I really like about it, it's kind of similar to Volgar. If you guys have played Volgar the Viking or maybe saw the, uh, the little preview I did of it a little while back, it has a mechanic kind of similar to that and also probably shows up in other games as well. I can't just think of any off the top of my head. Volgar's the one in, you know, most recent memory that makes sense. You have these upgrades to your guns, but when you, uh, when you get hit, I'll just, uh, show you guys an example of that so, like, I'll get hit by this duck here. When you get hit, you drop that upgrade. Uh, it doesn't act like Vulgar in the sense that it, you know, like, counts as your health or anything like that. But, uh, it is cool that it, you know, forces you to try to leverage yourself against the dangers of the world by, uh, giving you the opportunity to hang on to your weaponry by playing things well. Mr. Goobagilla, hello. How you doing? Get a coupon for this? I know! The price does not necessitate a coupon, but it's still pretty cool that those are, those are out there. It isn't constant motion killing my frame rate. Yeah, unfortunately, that is that is indeed the case here. You can fire pretty rapidly, too. You can only have three bullets on screen at a time, it looks like, unless you get a particular upgrade that shows up in later levels. Uh, but kind of helps to balance things out, I suppose. So here we go. Clearing through stage two now. I believe things are going quite smoothly. They just want to bear hug him. Exactly, yeah. And yeah, I've seen I've seen a few reactions in the chat already to this kind of art style. I think a lot of people are going to like it. A lot of people aren't going to be big fans of it, and that was kind of a silly thing. I like these platform mechanics, too. They're going to remind you a lot of Mega Man, I think, or, uh, you know, other Mega Man-like games, which are almost a sub-genre of themselves at this point, I would imagine. Uh, you can lean on these platforms to go left and right, which is pretty cool. You can also, uh, on other platforms, you'll be able to, you know, like, adjust your weight on them accordingly, kind of like seesaw type deal. I'm totally going to die here. I'm doing pretty terribly. Let me go up here and try to get this gun upgrade. There we go. Nice. And uh, this is actually a homing shot, which is super useful a lot of the time. You can actually just kind of fire them off and hope things go well, and they won't interfere with your progress any further, right? Oh, birthday cake. Thank you very, very much. Oh, my goodness. Strangely similar to Volgar. Yeah, it's, it's um, obviously, like, very, very different games overall. But, uh, yeah, it's got, a, it's got some similarities there for sure. The music is awesome, too. Yeah, that's another thing I wanted to say. Uh, music is very fitting. Good 8-bit style. Like it a lot. It's very basic, you know? Like, there's not much to it. Being a two-man team, you, you wouldn't think that there would be uh, a lot of complex... A lot of complexity, rather, to the game. But it, it absolutely works for what it is. Like, it's it's exactly what it sets out to be. It's a, two, it's a 2D side-scrolling shooter that introduces new mechanics and new gameplay as you go. And it does a great job of that. And it's only $2, too, which is one of the best parts of it. And I, and I just got... Silly damage again. Those bunnies are really difficult to deal with, believe it or not. One of the most threatening aspects of the game is a bunny. Hilarious. Um, as I was mentioning, the controls can seem a little bit floaty at times. When you're doing precise platforming like this is really the, uh, the only time it's affected me negatively. I, I sometimes felt like the jump was a little delayed, a little more delayed than I would have liked it to be. And I'm kind of just getting in the habit of shooting whenever I think that uh, something's gonna show up and ruin my life just like that and oh my goodness alright we're near the end of the level here so I'd really like to not mess this up here we go I'm gonna go like that and hopefully not fall down kill this guy from afar and oh my god oh careful careful kill the bunny there we go okay now we're making progress oh good 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 Nice! And, uh, we should be getting up to the... Yeah, this is gonna be the boss fight. So this is one of my favorite aspects of the game. The boss fights are freaking rad. So there's one of the first guys, and, uh... It's gonna remind you a lot of the old, uh, side-scrolling shooters. And the, uh, fact that... It's a lot of pattern memorization. That's all it really is. So this guy has three main attacks. The first one being that, uh... That down-low shot that you see. He's gonna have another one like this, where he, uh, fires in a big arc like that. And then he's gonna smash me with his butt! And that hurt me a lot, so I'm down to my normal weapon again here. I should probably be taking a lot more shots than I am because I just want to feature him a little bit more. Oh my goodness, that is kind of a confusing attack sometimes. You gotta be really quick on your feet here, too. Oh, I had a full birthday cake! 
It's more like Mario. Well, you don't ever jump on anything, but other than that, yeah, maybe. Mario with a gun. I can give you credit for that. Okay. Oh, goodness. Luckily, he didn't go the direction I wanted that time. Thank you. He really wants to sit on me today, apparently. Gotta take all the opportunities you can. But yeah, these these boss, boss fights are uh, very difficult. At least I had a lot of trouble with them when I was doing them the, uh, the very first times. Man, he just keeps firing at me. And there we go. All right, we took him down. Stage clear. Nice. Barry's been killing so many bunnies, I know my wife would be appalled with my behavior in video games as of late. Uh, as far as the uh, difficulty level is concerned, so again, we're playing on normal right now. I'm sure things could be a little, a little more difficult if we were playing on a uh, higher difficulty setting. That makes a lot of sense, right? In incredible insight there, Bear Taffy. I'm glad we have you here to discuss games with us. Oh god, that was close. Alright, there we go. Um, but, as far as the later levels are concerned, it doesn't get that much more difficult. If we were playing on hard, I think there would probably be, you know, like, uh, a scaling difficulty that doesn't really make too much of a difference. I, I didn't have very much trouble, you know, like, getting through stage three or anything like that. I mean, obviously I haven't played through the entirety of the thing yet, but... When I was playing the the parts of the third stage, I never really had too much trouble getting from point A to point B, and I uh, I suspect that that may change in the uh, in the very late stages. And uh, now we're getting down into the minecart section, which is so Donkey Kong esque. This is not even not even uh, not even a matter of questioning it to say that this game has a lot of inspirations that it is uh, not. It's not secretive about showing them off. It wants to, it wants to let you know where it came from, and I, I'm cool with that. You know, I like, I like that aspect of things. This minecart section was actually, um, uh, thankfully, not nearly as difficult as some that you may have found on DKC3 or something like that. But I like it a lot. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Very responsive minecart section, actually. Believe it or not, of all things, the minecart track is. The most responsive to your to your abilities. And here's some more Mega Man type stuff. You got some uh, appearing and disappearing platforms. Makes it really uh, makes it really nostalgic, and uh, that's a totally okay thing with me. Again, this thing is just it's just two dollars. It's just two dollars for a pretty damn well made 2D side scrolling shooter, and it's it's kind of hard to argue with that kind of value. You know, I mean like. Certainly not the most revolutionary thing. I think the most original thing about it is obviously the art style it's got going on, and that was a dumb, dumb way to die. Cartod, first time making it out to the stream. Welcome out, buddy. So yeah, it's, uh... There's not much more to say about it. I mean, like, things things scale pretty well. Your difficulty goes up as you move along. You're introduced to these new elements. We'll have the, uh, Danky Kang. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Uh, take it easy, Seymour. Thank you for coming. The, uh, the thing I, I wanted to mention is the, uh, like I was saying, there, there's, there's not much revolutionary about it, but I don't, I don't know, I don't even really know if that's, if that's what we should be looking for. I think we've, um, we've had a lot of entrants to the marketplace that are, you know, like, trying to go for the next big thing, the next... The next Thomas was alone or gone home or, you know, other things that have the long O sound, other games like that. <laughs> but it's totally fun to just have a game that's fun, that's well made. I think a lot, a lot of the games I've been playing actually lately have been that very thing. And well, this certainly has a couple of flaws, like the frame rate, for example. The, the floaty jumps could be an issue touched on in the future. By the way, I don't know if you probably already realized it yourself, but... Oh, well, first of all, I can't jump. That's probably one of the most important things. Uh, but second of all, you don't have any kind of checkpoint or continue system uh, in this game. It's all its all about making it through the entirety of the level in one fell swoop. So that can be a little bit unforgiving. I imagine in the uh, maybe in the harder difficulty settings that would uh, make it so uh, the masochistic among you who want to play a game like this are, uh, are able to get their money's worth. And oh my god, okay. Let's not fall down anymore here. I'm gonna get through this section just so I can move on to more things to discuss. Epsilon Channel, hello, how you doing? 
Okay. Jump up. Jump up. We can do this. There we go. Again, I'm playing with a 360 controller. I, I just... I cannot platform with a keyboard and mouse, man, or, or just a keyboard in general. Don't know what it is. I don't have that kind of dexterity, I suppose. The ability is necessary to do such a thing. Okay! Here we go. Uh, kill the bats. Kill the bats! Don't have an ability, but I'm still avoiding taking damage like the plague. Here we go. Here we go. First time you get on the stream is... Oh my god, Stigex! Know that I died for you, my friend. <laughs> I'm gonna get through this level, man. As soon as I'm talking about, like, how not very difficult the game is, it is punishing me. It, it hears... It hears my, uh... My, my bragging. Oh my god. I almost want to blame enough floating controls, but I know it's almost entirely my fault. Okay, I can do this. Here we go. I'm gonna wait for this to come back. I think I'm being impatient, that's the biggest thing. And that can easily spell your demise, something like this. Here we go. Wait for it. What? What? No! That's silly. Hitting my head on things. This, <laughs> this is really not facilitating my discussion of the game much farther than I can throw it here. I got it! I got it! One day, one day we'll make it past 2-whatever that we find ourselves in here. Bam, there we go. Alright, got the spread shot, or this is the homing shot actually, or maybe it's not. It's spread shot, there we go. Alright, now we're in better shape here. Nice. Okay, wait for the platform. What? <laughs> Good God, you gotta be kidding me. Oh, this is awful. I would have thought I'd be spending so much time, so many bear throws. I should have suspected with the way I was playing Spelunky today that I wouldn't be able to make it through like this. Stop bear failing, I know, right? Bear patience. We need to have an emote for every adjective. It's clearly the case here. Oh, the spikes. The silly, silly spikes. I can do this. I can do this. Well, bear, get good. I'm focusing so hard now. I'm making this a thing. Oh my god, bat. Got him. Alright, I remember now. It's all about pattern memorization, right? Well, we're not gonna throw there. We got it. Hey, Bear, do you ever play games? Okay, so we're finally past that screen, and luckily things aren't gonna be, like, instant killing us from this point forward. I mean, like, ducks, rabbits, and geese, oh my. Things that you wouldn't suspect would be, like, the, uh, the highest on your suspicion list of what to get wrecked by. Okay, climb the ladder. There we go. Now, this part confused me at first, because I thought it was supposed to, uh jump down here like I just did and uh, somehow make this jump work out which ended up being what I did in the first place floaty there we go grab that ladder and there's our full health there's a little sneak attacker at the end and we've made it nearly now this part is interesting because you can just straight up fall down and you don't really have to deal with any of that but there we go okay man gunman Clive look at that exact 100 clear time so, uh, yeah, I think I've, uh, I've run my mouth dry of, uh, of what I've got to say about this game. I think you guys have probably made a distinction for yourselves. Well, I think, uh, maybe one of the first things you want to do is prove to me that this is not as difficult as I'm making it out to be. But this is Gunman Clive. It's on Steam for $2. I don't think I can, uh, I don't think I can sell that point any further than I have, but... God, what a price for something like this. I highly recommend it, guys. It's a good time. Gunman Clive on Steam. I'm going to go ahead and play this through as I uh, thank you all for coming out to the Indie Spotlight. Thank you all for coming out to the Bear Taffy Live Show. It's been a really good time. You can find out more information about the game down in the description below. Made by two merry men who are probably uh, folks that enjoy seeing people like me get a big ego and then have my, have my head drained for the terrible, terrible things that I've done. And I don't want to get to the second boss because the second boss is actually pretty rad and I don't want to spoil it for you guys. So there's quite a bit more content in store for you. Again, thanks so much for checking it out. Thanks so much for coming to the BTLS. My name's Baron. I'll see you next time.